Hi, and welcome to Connect. I'm Pastor Abby. Today we're going to be talking about something so many of us have heard about, but we're going to be digging a little bit deeper into this topic. And that topic is eternal life. Now, one of the most familiar passages of scripture for most of us that many of us have memorized when we were young is John 3.16. And John 3.16 says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So I want to unpack that a little bit for you today and just dive a little bit deeper into some of the areas in this verse that we can overlook. So we often read the scripture as Jesus died for our sins so that we would not perish, which is true. But stopping here makes us miss one of the most important parts of this verse. The real purpose of Jesus coming to earth and dying on the cross is that we could have eternal life. Now, when Adam and Eve sinned, there was a separation between us and God. Now, our sin blocked us from being in relationship with our perfect creator. No longer could we experience the kind of life that God destined it and, and created us to enjoy. We couldn't do what we were meant to do anymore. And in short, we needed saving. We needed a savior. So it is true that Jesus came to die for our sins. And it is true that as we believe in Jesus, we will not perish. But there's so much more to the gospel than just that. The real message of the gospel is that God wants to give you eternal life. Now, eternal life, if you just think about it quickly, we would think it means living forever. But it's so much more than just living forever. You see, everyone dies, but they don't cease to exist. Now, for believers and non-believers alike, that means that as they die, they're buried, their body decays, but their spirit goes on into eternity. Every single person who has ever lived on this earth will continue on in spirit form. So to say that eternal life just means living forever is not the whole picture here. It's not just the difference between spending eternity in heaven versus spending eternity in hell either. So what is the significance of eternal life? Well, let's uh, look at a little bit of scripture that will help us to understand that. So in John 17 verse 3, it says this, and Jesus said this on the night that he was going to be crucified. He says, now this is eternal life that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. You know, this passage makes it very clear that everlasting life begins, its foundation is in knowing the Father, the only true God, and knowing Jesus Christ, whom God has sent. That's what eternal life is, to know God and to know Jesus Christ. It's more than just an intellectual knowledge, like I, I know um, a famous person or I know this type of movie or I know that. It's more than just an intellectual knowledge of. The word know used throughout scripture 
is used to describe the most intimate and personal relationship that is possible for a human being to have. The real purpose of salvation is not just living forever in heaven, though that is a part of it. The purpose of our salvation is intimacy with our Creator. The very core of our salvation is knowing and having a restored relationship with our Heavenly Father. And that opens the floodgate to a host of other benefits that we receive through eternal life. Eternal life not only pertains to our future in heaven one day with Jesus spending eternity, but it also relates to our now, to our today. If we explain the purpose of salvation as only being in heaven, we are not doing a good service to the gospel because the gospel is so much more than just our eternity in heaven. And when we present salvation as something that only deals with spiritual things that will only benefit us one day in the future, in eternity, we're not helping people. You know, the, all of us know people, and if we don't know them, we don't have to look far to find people who are living in a literal hell today. Many people we know are depressed. Many are living in poverty. Many deal with strife day to day. Uh, many feel the pain of rejection and hurt. Uh, multiple people are going through failed marriages. People really are just trying to survive day to day. They're just trying to keep their heads above water, keep breathing, make it to the end of the day. And if we explain and, and uh, convey salvation as only something that deals with our future, only something after we die, many people actually put off making that decision because they're just trying to survive today. So eternal life, Eternal speaks about the length of time, forever, eternally, everlasting. But life speaks about the quality. What does a God kind of life look like? Because that's what this is talking about, eternal life, the God kind of life. And that's not just for heaven, that's for here on earth today. A blessed life here with us today on earth. You know, the Amplified Bible puts, whenever it says the word blessed, I love it because it, it expands that and it says blessed meaning happy, fortunate, and to be envied. That is what is, is in this term, eternal life. That happy, fortunate, and to be envied life of God here with us today. The truth is that Jesus not only came to affect our eternal desires, uh, sorry, our eternal destinies, so that we can live forever in blessing uh, without the punishment of hell, but Jesus also came to deliver us from the present evil in this world. And you can read about that in Galatians 1 verse 4. Jesus put it this way in John 10 verse 10. It says this, The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. You no, know, God wants to give you eternal life. God wants to give you abundant life and a life that is for us to experience and live out and have today. Christ died not only to forgive your sins, but to bring you close to Him. He wants to be with you and He wants to be intimate with you. Being in that relationship with Him restores life to us both in our today and in our eternity. Now, if you're listening today and you don't yet know the Lord, 
You need to know him for that purpose. He can change you today and he can, ta- he can change your eternity. But if you've already been born again, you need to go beyond just securing your eternity in heaven with the Father. We as Christians have barely touched the surface in eternal life, understanding what that means for our today. The God kind of life. You know, Jesus is in love with you. He wants to know you personally. Jesus came to have intimacy and a personal relationship with God the Father today. And Jesus wants to give you a quality of life right here today that is greater than anything you could obtain from any other source. Well, as I close today, I just want to encourage you, if you're watching alone, just to dig a little bit deeper into the scriptures that we've talked today. And if you're with the group, take this opportunity to discuss among yourselves some of the meaning of what it means to have eternal life. Well, I'm just gonna pray for you as we close. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for an opportunity to be together, to be centered around your word. Lord, we know verses like John 3, 16, but Father, I pray today they would come alive in us. Your word says that the word of God is like a a double-edged sword. It's sharp and it brings life and it uh, touches us. There's revelation in your word. So Father, today I just thank you for new revelation. I thank you for blessing each person watching. I thank you for blessing each family. And I just pray that your life would be upon them today. In Jesus' name, amen.